Equinine Digital, I am Adarsh Vepachedo. In a bid to beef up vaccine supply, talks are going on to start manufacturing Covaxin at various other places run by vaccine manufacturers. Special manufacturing plants will also be set up. Leaders like Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival are seeking a transfer of vaccine formula so that production can start in their respective states. Now I must tell you, production of Covaxin involves dealing with large quantities of live coronavirus which requires skilled labor and the right kind of facility called the BSL-3 or Biosafety Level 3. Having said that, is manufacturing Covaxin a piece of cake? Is it just about having the formula? Or is it about technology and manufacturing? How risky is the process of manufacturing Covaxin and what does it involve? I ask the same to Dr. Sitesh Roy, clinical immunologist and allergy specialist from Mumbai, and this is what he had to say. So Adarsh, it's not just about getting the formula for the vaccine. It is also extremely important to know the manufacturing processes and the technology behind making that vaccine safely and exactly as the original research that led to its approval. Uh, there is a lot of minute technology right from having what is called the master viral lots and then the working viral lots or seeds from which the live virus is grown, following which it has to be inactivated and after inactivation has to go through various isolation filtration processes before the vaccine can be prepared. So a vaccine like this is not just about getting the formula for the vaccine or the ingredients for the vaccine, but it is the entire technology where biosafety at level 3 or 4 is required while you're, cult while you're culturing vaccines and then making the end product safely and accurately. So given that you're dealing with a live virus that needs to be inactivated, the margin of error needs to be zero. But in case of an error, just how bad can matters get? If we look at the errors that can occur, let's talk about the error in actually growing the virus in a culture because you have to grow the live virus, which is the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And only after you've grown it, can you inactivate it. Now you're growing it in bulk, in large quantities. And in doing so, if there is a leak, a biosafety leak that occurs, then you're talking about a widespread outbreak of the virus amongst all the employees who work at that unit. So immense amount of technology and training goes into doing this safely. At the other end, if something is missing in the technology or the manufacturing processes and the end vaccine is not as potent as it should be, then you end up with a suboptimal vaccine which does not give you the antibody protection and does not give you the level of results that you expect from the original manufactured product. So there are a lot of concerns and risks with just having the formula but not having the technology behind it. I then asked Dr. Sitesh if on the contrary, manufacturing Covishield or mRNA vaccines like Pfizer or Moderna would be easier as they don't require BSL-3 facilities. So Covishield still requires the chimpanzee adenovirus to be cultured because only after that culture can you do the subsequent steps whereby you insert the plasmid DNA for the production of the spike proteins into those cells. And in doing so, you also require a lot of technology and a lot of science to do this safely, accurately and perfectly. On the other hand, the mRNA platforms tend to be easier because they are subunit vaccines and only deal with a specific technology which cannot give you an infection or an outbreak. And hence, in that situation, the mRNA technology is, is relatively simpler, but still very technologically advanced and requires a lot of specifications for its manufacturing. But it might be more open for knowledge sharing amongst different companies or organizations around the world. If you like the information that I've shared with you, make sure you like and share this video. And yes, subscribe to TV9 News on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.